Okay, so we're starting Rebecca's uh, chapter. So uh, it's been a while since I recorded this, which is like a day or two. Okay, so profile. How old are you? You are twenty nine. Yeah, you're tw you're seriously twenty nine. Why is everyone older than Isabella? Yeah, she's 20, 31, 31, 31, 29, really. So, this is how it begins, or so they say. With a gentle wind drifting through op wide open windows, muffled laughter and footsteps fading behind empty hallways, and the light kiss of the afternoon sun. Soon there will be a call across a cross uh, I can't even say crossing of thresholds into the unknown. Maybe we are off to some grand adventure or diving into another gripping mystery. One can't really tell. For all I know, a hero might even come sweep me off my feet if I'm lucky. That's not exactly a bad thing when you think about it. But this is far from one, isn't it? A riveting tale, that is. So what is this? So it is October 21st. The mild breeze, the faint murmurs, and the... Oh, the warm rays painting every nook and cranny a fiery hue. They are all as real as they can get. As much as I want to write a little tale out of this, I'm far from someone who can. Fleeting fantasies, that's what these are. Merely passing thoughts to occupy an idle mind while waiting for another busy day or another busy work day to end. Then again, maybe in another life I am one? Who knows? But at present, what I have and what I've chosen to be? Well, I won't last years here if I find teaching rowdy adolescents a tedious job, will I? Admittedly, the whole affair isn't exactly as grand or exciting as I had imagined as a child. If I weren't so stubborn and too passionate about the whole idea, I probably would have quit a long time ago. But... It's not, it's always the kids that make it worthwhile, isn't it? As if in agreement, as soon as my pen slides into a neat circle against the papers I'm grading, the final bell rings. Like a dam that has opened, students begin piling out into the hallway soon after another. Alright, and I'm gonna head to the, the restroom really quick, so hold on. Back in. For a short minute, I let the noise fill my ears. Let my mind wander to a place far removed. All the hubbub. Solitary moments like, the, like this have come few and far between lately. Even my own home hasn't been quite, hasn't been as quiet as I usually as usually I prefer. Though in hindsight, the entire place hasn't been the same either since Isabella moved in next door. Oh, they shared their apartment. Or building. And if her fussing over a minor cold last week tells anything, I might as well 
throw any idea of solitude out the nearest balcony so long as she lives nearby. At the memory, my eyes automatically shift over the bottle sitting at the edge of my desk. <laughs> A chuckle escapes from me as I reach for it. A little ball of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> that big baby. <laughs> Mother Hen, she calls me. And then says and does the same thing right after. It's not that I'm unused to being on the receiving end of other people's worries, or I feel any sort of apprehension over her fretting. If I am to be completely honest, it's actually amusing how someone can be childlike one minute, then act like an irresponsible adult the next. But there's a uh, this this Hans, this Hannes there, both in her actions and words. Although she may not look like it, may not say anything, may not lose her cheer one way or another. I know these troubles have weighed down on her lately. Her face says it all. That that. Big Nupti? If she thinks I won't notice, she's got another thing coming for her. That's how she has always been. I do understand that part, loud and care, it's just that. I really rather not pass another burden on to her. Or become one myself. Aren't I supposed to be the one taking care of them. Though I guess that's simply one of those things people eventually grow away from once you've all started leading different lives. Not completely different, I hope. Somehow that uh, makes me feel uneasy. Thankfully, before stranger ideas can take root in my head, a faint buzzing comes from my bag, cutting through the rest of my thoughts. A small frown forms in my lips when the screen lights up and an unknown number flashes. For a long second, my thumb hovers over the answer button, even though voice that responds, once I do accept the call, is wholly unfamiliar. Hello? Yes, I... Yes, speaking. Uh, who is this? Oh, sorry. Rose Cooper, Raya Realty Corporation. Sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, no wonder. I was trying to guess what that voice was. Raya Realty? My frown deepens as I straighten from my chair. Something in her tone, despite sounding remarkably friendly and light, doesn't sit quite well with me. The rigid pause that follows doesn't help ease the tension that has suddenly descended either. Miss Cooper? I... yes. Things are a bit busy on my end, I apologize. I'm not certain if Isabella has mentioned anything before, but we're working together on a property at the moment, and... The Armagod Mansion, yes. She said something about that earlier. Is there a problem? This is about Isabella, actually. She wastes no time relaying everything. The details she provided are admittedly a bit vague, but enough for me to get a gist of what happened. It isn't the bad sort I'm expecting, though still worrying. Especially with words panic attack and pale looking a bit sickly woven together in one forbidding sentence. But as quickly as the surfaces, I stomp down on the urge to demand answers right there and then. Now isn't the proper time for useless questions. I'll find out soon enough regardless. To Miss Cooper's credit, she neither hesitates nor falters all throughout. 
There's some sort of comfort in knowing Isabella uh, has someone like her to guide her, though not as much as I would have liked. After all, this is Isabella we're talking about. What are the chances she just said a bunch of excuses so she won't get sent home? High. Very high. Oh, she is so going to hear it, th hear it this time. You were listed as one of her emergency contacts, so I thought it'd be best you know about this. How is she? I is she doing okay? I had her take a break for now, but honestly, I'd feel better if someone were to pick her up and take her home for some rest. Anthem's a fair distance from Luxborn. I really don't want her going off on her own. I do it myself, but oh, you know how it is today. Big day. People everywhere until the open house ends. I'm really sorry to ask this of you, Miss Gales. I know you're busy. Oh, no, no, it's all good. I was just about to leave from work. I hope to leave early today anyway. A few minutes ahead wouldn't hurt. I can be there in a few, uh, 30, 40 minutes tops. Is that all right? Except Ash was the one that picked her up. More than fine, Miss Gales, thank you. We're supposed to be here until... Oh, excuse me, one moment, please. Yes, ma'am. The faint hum of conversation echoes from her end. It sounds as though the place is buzzing with more people than you expect from a regular open house. I was skeptical at first. The house is old. Not to mention its inconvenient location in Luxembourg's outskirts. Who wants to live in a place almost an hour's drive away from the comforts of a city? But from what little I can hear, it appears Isabella has every right to be optimistic about the sale. If I didn't understand why she was so adamant refusing my offer to, of help before, I think I do now. To some degree. We'll be resuming the tour soon. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. I really need to get this thing going. Lord knows how I'll salvage the situation here. It shouldn't be anything complicated, but still, clients. It can be difficult when they want to be. Anyway, just look for me when you get here, alright? I shouldn't be too hard to miss. No problem. Thanks for letting me know about this. Just... just make sure Isabella stays put, please. Heaven knows how stubborn that girl can be. Oh, believe me, I know. Don't worry about it. I'll have a few of our staff keep an eye on her for me until you get here. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. I appreciate it. The whole thing ends on a surprisingly pleasant note. And look at my relationship. Just a little Isabella, a little bit of Ashton. Only person she's not too fond of is Marianne. And I'm surprised Hana isn't like, you know, like Isabella status. <laughs> because childhood friend, kind of. If only the same can be said for the news she brought. I allow a brief minute to pass to ease whatever tension has lashed itself firmly onto my nerves. But no matter how much I wish for it, my mind stubbornly refuses to do so. My hands are unsteady against the, pep uh, against the papers I pretend to ar arrange after. Lucid thoughts, every single ounce of a grimmer than the other, grows with each passing second I linger. Something about this whole thing, along with the sudden unease and nagging worry, screams off. Wrong. This isn't the riveting tale I hope to step into today. Even on a rush, getting everything in order before leaving takes nearly a good quarter hour. By the time I make it out of the classroom, the commotion has already died down, dwindling to mere echoes and distant laughters. From the nearby room, melodies from a rehearsing, rehearsing band 
drifts freely into the air, filling the almost empty hallway with their warm, lively tunes. And the other day, I'll stop, bask in the music, and enjoy what little peace it brings. Not today, however. My steps are brisk and sure as I march to Edward Hall's exit. The sooner I can the sooner I confirm Isabella's is okay, the sooner I can shake off this niggly feeling. For one reason or another, that single call of all possible things has thrown everything off kilter. I'd rather this be over with as quickly as possible. So much that I nearly barrel over a student in my haste. Though perhaps it's really the other way around. Hey, Kylie! When I look down, a set of eyes, bright and hopeful, stare back at me. Her arms are wrapped around my waist like a fist, and at my attention, a grin spreads over her face. Wait, what? When is TARDIS, Miss Pink? Hello, Kylie! And you didn't even pern you didn't even say those words! How dare you! You know, you aren't supposed to run into people like that. Where's her voice? Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, Miss Pink. She loosens her hold on me, but not a hint of guilt or regret appears on her face on her. If anything, it seems the remark only amused her. A smile appears on my face before I can help it, matching the one of on her own. Just remember not to do it again, alright? You could get hurt. <laughs> you sound like my mama when she's scolding Rowan, Miss Pink. <laughs> I'm sure your mama only means well. I know she'll be worried sick if one of you were to get hurt. Where's your brother anyway? Aren't you two supposed to be heading home now? Rowan said he's got some stuff he needs to do before we go. I think he's taking too long. <laughs> but he promised to buy me jelly babies today. If I keep what he's doing a secret from Mama and Papa. Hmm. Any chance you'll tell Miss Pink about it? She shakes her head, both her hands going to her mouth as if to keep a precious secret from spilling out. I need a promise. Luke. Something wrong with the audio. Oh, something like a gift? Like a deal. Yeah, the voice is off. Tio promised to take him somewhere cool when he's old enough. We're always gonna prove he's a grown up. <laughs> 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 Laughter slips free from my lips. The teacher in me wants to give whoever this Teal is a revenant for bringing about this kind of behavior in children. But if both Satori kids are so fond of him, there shouldn't be anything to worry about, yes? At any rate, they're nothing but well-behaved, both Kylie and her brother. Rowan, the eldest, may have an occasional odd streak in and out of class, but their parents taught them well. I see no reason to cast any suspicion of bad behavior on them. As long as it isn't anything dangerous, alright? It's not! Cross my heart! My drawings are a lot prettier than what he's doing anyway. Tio said so. Do you want to see? I drew one earlier at class. Is that why you're here? Not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I like how she said it. I was gonna show it to my friend first, but since it's you, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you see it before she does. Oh, uh, oh no. I can't stay right now, Kylie. Oh, Her face falls immediately after the words are out. A small part of me feels responsible for that chestfallen look. But as much as I want to stay a little longer, there's another place I need to be at right now. And frankly, another child to look after. 
Taking both of her hands, I kneel in front of her and muster the most rueful smile I can give. At her age, I'm quite sure she already understands what I'm about to say before they're even out. But remarkably, she doesn't look away or pout as I'm expecting her to. I'm sorry. You know what? Rowan has a class with me on Monday around this time. Why don't you drop by again next week? After class? I'll even make sure to wait for you. It's just that I absolutely must leave now. My friend had an accident earlier, and I'm the only one she has here. What about her mama and papa? Oh. Her family lives really far from here, I'm afraid. Do you remember where Asia is? The southeast part? That's where they are. Her eyes immediately light up. And my question, just like that, I know I earned the girl's forgiveness. Oh, just like Takako. What? Who? <laughs> yes, who? My friend. She said she used to live there, only just a little higher than southeast. But she hasn't come home in a long time, so she doesn't remember much about it anymore. Melody says it's weird I talk to her, but I think she's just shy. They could be good friends too! Don't you think so, Miss Pink? Maybe if you introduce them properly, they will be. That's what I think. <laughs> Takako's just lonely. If she makes more friends, she won't be anymore. Is your friend like that too? A little, possibly. To be honest, sometimes... Sometimes I can't tell with her. After all, Isabella has always been the kind to hold a smile, even when things have taken a turn for the worst. Five years, and one will think it's enough time to know a person. But when you consider it, come to think of it, all these years I never even, not even once, seen her cry. Not over a trivial matter, or even when things are tough. Okay, you can go to her. I'll just show you my drawing next time. <laughs> this kid. Thank you. Remind me to buy you a huge glass of parfait, alright? No, I'll get a stomach ache. Takako says so. Uh. A small one is okay. I'll remember that. Say hi to your friend for me. I will! I'm sure she'd love to meet you too! See you, Miss Pink! Miss Pink, <laughs> I'll see you later, Kylie. If only we have like this or this with the real world. It will be so oh, weird. Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. She doesn't look back or wait for any sort of goodbye from me. Lady. With a song and an extra spring in her steps. She bounds across the corridor with as much spirit only a child her age can have. As if the conversation has never taken any downhill turn for her at all. As if there isn't a single thing to worry about in the world. Not long after, she disappears behind the door, leaving behind strains of an old, familiar rhythm lingering in the air. Carefree. Unbidden. On troubled moments like this, I envy her. And, as I resume my hurried pace, a tiny whisper at the back of my mind wishes the same can be said of myself and my own worries. Luxbourne may be a small city, but it's no stranger to hellish rush hour traffic. But surprisingly, getting out of the city today proves more of a breeze than a hassle. A relief considering how none of my calls to Isabella have made it through. Either the reception's really bad over there, or she's ignoring them on purpose. Both does nothing to ease the dis disquiet in me. The rest of my drive passes without much incident as soon as I'm out of I'm I'm out the busy streets. In less than thirty minutes, the mansion looms ahead of me. I, I think Ash Picked her up already. 
For all the fuss Isabella made about the house, it remains a thing of beauty. Unlike Luxborn, the estate and the nearby Anselm village stand at its complete opposite. Living and breathing the songs of the old, whispers of a once booming haven lingering in the air. Contemporarily, conveniences aside, it's a place I'm glad modern civilization hasn't wholly touched. It's just a shame the locals know more of the silly hearsay than the history itself. Um, it's just a shame the locals, including its potential buyers, know more of the silly hearsay. If I could only knock some sense into these people! Sadly, complaining is all I can do, I, I can afford to do. As much as I want to give them a piece of my mind, it isn't why I'm here. I don't think these rich types will appreciate getting a lecture from me either. I have as much business with them as they have with me. With a heavy sigh, I give myself one last second to take in the scenery before heading up the main entrance. Most, most of the guests are already heading out. Though some still linger, it's mainly just to take photos of the house facade or various rooms. I pause for a moment, scanning the small crowd gathered at the foyer, looking for any sign of that familiar ponytail among the sea of hats and heads. No sign of her. I think she's already picked up. No sign of the other staff or Miss Cooper either. I can certainly look for Isabella on my own, but in a place this big? I'd be lucky if I didn't end up lost or find her before we need to meet with Zachary and Ash tonight. Signing. I reach for my mobile and redial her number. A gesture familiar now after so many attempts earlier. If she doesn't answer, I can still try contacting Miss Cooper. I just hope the network reception will cooperate this time. This side of the county has never been popular with it, with the tech savvy after all. To my relief, it only took three unsuccessful tries. At the fourth one, right as it's about to switch to another uh, interception message, the line finally rings. Silence follows while I wait for her to pick up the ringing going far too long for my taste. By now, most of the visitors have already cleared out. All I have for company are the faint murmurs and an eerie calmness left in their wake. A sudden hush settles and gives way to noises louder than they're ever meant to be. Doors creaking and slamming shut in some distant part of the mansion, floorboards groaning under the sheer weight of the house's history. In a now empty hall, they all vertebrate with special clarity against the walls. Like this, those old stories seem to almost have a ring of truth to it. I don't get to stray far into that ugly line of thought, however. Not a second later, a click sounds from the other end. Hello? Isabella? Miss Cooper called earlier and- Wait, are you serious? I didn't even look at the letter yet. Isabella? Bell? Are you alright? Without any warning, the call gets cut off. Busy notes blare sharply against the heavy silence. I didn't even look that letter. Uh, who am I kidding? It killed off workers and people from the real estate. Who am I to complain now? <laughs> but above the noise cutting through the mute air remains the faint cries of a woman. From beyond the foyer. My hand falls to my side as I cast a weary look around waiting for someone to come running. Surely, I can't be the only one here hearing this. 
There must still be some staff hanging around checking things out, but no one does. Not even when her sobs turn more frantic and anguished. Excuse me? Hello? Who's there? I Isabella? Isabella? I is that you? No answer. Growing anxious, I amble over where her cries come from, each step slow and cautious, towards the door on the other end of the room. While I'm far from someone who really gives in to fear or stories lacking factual basis, the vague, restless feeling I have earlier immediately returns to me. And despite myself, my heart begins to race and my breathing quickens. Bell? Bell, it's me. Miss Cooper called. Is everything okay? Abruptly. All of it stops. My whole body tenses, mouth dragging in a ragged breath, ears straining for any other sound yet to come from the other side. But nothing follows. Instead, the quiet only lends itself to the heavy tension in the air, as if every small <sighs> movement will disturb the fragile stillness hanging in the room. I wait for another second. Then, with a caution, I reach for the knob. My fingers barely graze the brass handle when a hand falls on my shoulder. Excuse me, ma'am? Uh, oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Hello, Rose. No, I... I it's... Uh... Still really, my gaze shifts back to the door, as if any second now, the cries will start again, or whoever's inside will burst out of the room. But I don't get to dwell on these. The woman's worried voice breaks through the haze in my mind again, oddly soothing in the thick of my unease. <laughs> Even if the concerned look comes from a total stranger, finally, begin, finally being in a company of someone else is somehow comforting. Ma'am? Are you okay? Uh, oh, no. I'm fine. This is probably just some... some cold. Do you need to sit down? No, no. No need. I'm... I'm actually looking for a friend. A wave the mobile in front of her, like the gesture alone explains everything. Vaguely, I note my tight grip on it and quickly slip it into my pocket before she notices. She doesn't need to know. Well, I'm not really sure if your friend would still be here. We are actually about to close the open house in a few minutes, ma'am. No worries. She's not a guest here. She works for Briar Realty. Uh, Miss... Miss Cooper called me earlier. In fact, I'm also looking for her. <laughs> Recognition flashes in her eyes, and her worried expression dissolves into a smile at once. It's all I need to know that I don't have to look elsewhere or venture deeper into the mansion on my own. In some way, I'm not too keen on the ladder right now. Oh, Miss Rebecca Gales, is it? Yes, <laughs> sorry if I'm a bit late. <laughs> it's not a problem. I was busy with the open house and a few clients anyway. It's actually a good thing you came when you did. Let's see, Isabella should be here somewhere. I told her to stay put earlier. Girl, never listen. Rose? Rosie? May I have a minute? There's just this one little thing before we go. Miss Cooper's head immediately snaps up at the voice. In a blink, a different kind of smile spreads on her face. A smile, still, friendly even, but the kind given mainly for the sake of pleasing other people rather than making friends. Yes, ma'am. I'll be there in a few. It's an impressive thing, to say the least. 
that level of professionalism. I suppose working years in this kind of business trains you enough to be able to pull that off without batting an eye. It certainly didn't seem to have rubbed off on Isabella though. Sorry, could you give me a second? I have to take care of this. Don't worry about it, I understand. I can wait a few more minutes. Clients, right? <laughs> you won't hear anything from me. Priorities, you know? But if you want, you can stay at the parlor in the meantime. I think we have a few refreshments left. No, thank you. I'm going out with a few friends after this. Isabella is supposed to join us too. But that depends on how she's doing, of course. Alright, this won't be long, I promise. She throws me an apologetic look before sauntering over the small group gathered at the entrance. A couple, or siblings, and another woman, probably their secretary. Either way, they look no different from the other guests. All three of them, prettily dressed, I bet in a manner significantly simpler than the others, no frills, no extravagance of any form. But their gestures and movements alone speak volumes of their ingrained lifestyle. In their presence, I do what I can to appear inconsumptuous on my side of the foyer. Maybe accepting Miss Cooper's offer would have been a much better choice than standing around awkwardly and gapping at them. All while also attempting my best not to listen in on their conversation. Although that one proves more difficult with how enthusiastic the blonde woman is, her voice easily echoes through the halls with only the five of us here. Pretty soon, I find myself being drawn into their talk without meaning to. Tomorrow? First thing in the morning? First thing in the morning, ma'am. The mundane talk isn't what catches my attention, however. Very well. We'll have our lawyers prepare everything as soon as possible. Let's make this whole thing easier for everyone, shall we? Just let me know if there's anything you need from me. You know how to contact me, yes? Got your mobile number saved here already. Good. It's just a matter of time, then. It's a brief moment. A fleeting shift on my eye. Monday for us, Marianne. As long as you're positive, we won't be having any problems by that time. You can count on my team. You worry too much. Let me handle those things. Do be thrilled, though. I imagine it's not every day you get projects like this, hmm? And the instant I turn my gaze on him, I see it. Oh, I'm certain Mint's ecstatic, Buttercup. Wait, what? Why is there an air around him? Aren't you, Marianne? You know, we could all celebrate this with a few drinks. Why don't we? In fact, there's this really excellent Irish pub I visited a few days ago. Looming. Hovering over his shoulders. Drawn to him like a moth to a flame. A dark blur. No. A shadow. I... <clears throat> I think I'll pass on that, sir. I have... more important matters to attend to. Mother love, she's busy. Hmm. What a shame. What? Is this her with the cold, or is this the house fucking with me? And you never let me do any of those fun. This was on purpose, huh? But as I try to make sense of it, a heavy feeling descends over my body. It happens without warning, forcing me to close my eyes. The sensation creeps through every part of me, crawling under my skin and draining me, little by little, of any strength. Before I know it, 
My hand is gripping the nearby door for support. The sudden nausea drowns out their voices and what little sound there is. All except for the whispers and laughters. Judging, mocking, taunting, muffled, inaudible words bearing down on me like a death sentence. They wrap around my neck and limbs, binds tightening with every syllable, every utterance. And with each draw of breath I take, they drag me down slowly, almost painfully, into a bottomless abyss. I think it's the cold. On and on and on, till the sounds turn into mere distant echoes. Until suddenly, it shatters. Well, what are we waiting for? Are we done here? His voice rips through the fog like a sharp blade and my eyes snap open. When I look to them again, it's gone. You can head back to the car first if you want, Luke. I hope that settles everything, Rose. I don't know what Isabel's problem is, but please make sure she doesn't hurt herself. Anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Likewise, ma'am. No shadows or dark clouds. Only anisable smiles and cordial handshakes. The usual pleasuries as Miss Cooper leads them out the mansion like a graceful host. None of the group seems to have noticed it. And even as I force my breathing to calm down, keep my eyes trained on their backs and wait for something to happen, it doesn't come back. She returns a moment earlier. Gently, she closes the great doors behind her, but there's a smile on her lips and an extra skip in her step when she walks back to me. Whatever she was discussing with the group had put her in a good mood. Even she appears to have not observed anything odd. Was I just seeing things? <sighs> Glad that was over. It's been a long day. I thought for sure we're going to... Uh, hey, are you sure you're doing okay? You look a bit green. Says you. It, it, it's all good. I'm actually still recovering from a cold. Weather's been crazy lately. That must be it. The weather, the stupid cold, and the friendly warnings I'm too stubborn to listen to. As much as I hate to admit it, Isabella's right. I was, and still am, a little feverish when she visited me at school this morning. The medicine helped, of course, but only some. Although it's not like I can't function, it did get better after lunch, and I was able to go through my schedule like the usual. <sighs> now, now I'm not so sure. However, I can't keep acting like I've seen some sort of apprehension when it's anything but. I simply must have listened too many times to Isabel last week. My fever, muddled mind has started to confuse things. If this doesn't let up, I just need another visit to my doctor, plain and simple. Though I do hope it won't get worse, we did promise to watch Zachary's film. Together. I know what you mean. I've been complaining to Isabel. It doesn't seem to affect her much, though. Must be because she grew up in the tropics. <laughs> anyway, shall we? She's probably hanging out with the rest of the catering staff. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised she's there. She eats like ten hungry men when she isn't feeling well. <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way. With a small nod, she gestures for me to follow. I do so without much thought, finally putting everything in the back of my mind. 